सर देवेन Okay, and the last thing we were seeing was this uh, Galois fields, extension fields, right? So at least this field, I think most of you should be familiar with. I'll, I'll denote it either g of 2 power m. I think this is again another notation or f 2 power m. Okay, so how am, I, how am I going to define it? I can, as I showed you in the previous classes, I can think of this as 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, so on till alpha power what? 2 power m minus 2, okay, and alpha power 2 power m minus 1 equals 1, and there's one more relationship, right? Alpha power m equals, right, some some function of what? So you you'll get something like some a0 alpha power. No, I'm sorry. I think let me write this carefully. Okay, a0 plus a1 alpha plus so until a m minus 1 alpha power m minus 1 what are these a's this comes this this relation comes from pi alpha which is what a degree m primitive polynomial okay so once you pick all that carefully you know you can always get f2 power m in this form okay all right so that's uh, that's the that's the galois field okay that's the finite field with 2 power m elements. Okay, so so to give you a brief motivation for where we'll be finally going, I want to I want to start off by saying defining <coughs> codes which are called BCH codes using these finite uh, elements from this finite field. So you'll see the critical idea. So you you saw we saw we saw methods for designing parity check matrices for minimum distance three and even four. Okay, with binary entries itself, we could happily define a parity check matrix with some simple constraints that you can easily enforce no two columns are the same right that's that's not too bad to enforce for minimum distance 3 for minimum distance 5 we had this problem we couldn't really easily design binary matrices where you can guarantee that four columns will never add to 0 or three columns would never add to 0 it's, it's more complicated the number of conditions you have to check becomes more and more involved okay so the crucial idea in coming up with a general parity check matrix for for any minimum distance you desire is the use of finite fields. So you say, I will come up with a parity check matrix whose entries are not from F2, but from F2 power M. Okay, so you'll take that liberty. So I'll say my parity check matrix will not have entries which are binary, but the entries of the parity check matrix will be from F2 power M. Okay, so that's the crucial trick. Okay, and there's a very nice way of constructing a parity check matrix over F2 power M which will easily guarantee a minimum distance for you okay so that is what we're going to see next and uh, there are a lot of issues there we'll, from there we'll come back and look at this field once again very closely and look at polynomials over these fields and all that so we'll come back to these fields and study them closely once again but before that i want to give you this this construction for bch codes which gives you any minimum distance you want okay well any minimum distance as in to a reasonable x okay so of course of course the bounds cannot be violated right the bounds that you had before for Minimum distance n k and d cannot be violated. So within that, you can do a lot of these, lot of these things. Okay, so that's the definition for BCH codes. Okay, so if you want expansions, uh, B is Bose and C is Chaudhary. So you can see Indian names are are there right at the beginning. After that, they went somewhere. You will never see an Indian name in coding theory for a long time. Okay. Then this name, I can never pronounce it correctly and I'm sure I can't write the spelling correctly, something like this. Okay. So, it's, it's, it's named after all three of them who came up with this code. Okay. So, what is the goal here? Okay. So, I'm going to, I'm going to come up with some parity check matrix, which, is the which will achieve a target minimum distance D. Oh. Okay, I will use let's say let's say alpha belonging to f2 power m is a primitive element. Okay, what does this mean when I say alpha belonging to f2 power m is a primitive element? I can construct f2 power m 
in this form 0 1 alpha alpha square so on okay it's, I think I defined that in last class so that's the primitive element using this using these elements of f2 power m we will construct a parity check matrix which will guarantee a minimum distance d okay that's what we'll do let me make sure I get I get the whole thing right okay okay so what will we do we will construct a H to achieve D. D using elements from from F to power M. Okay, so the first thing you should ask me is, does it even make sense? Can I construct a parity check matrix from F to power M and get a binary code? It's because each element can be represented as a binary. Yeah, so it's possible. Okay, so like you said, every element can be represented as a vector. That's one way of thinking about it. But I'll come back and justify that also a little bit. Okay, but another way of thinking about it is the zero and one are contained in f two power m. Okay, so even if I have, okay, so even if I have h being, let's say, an uh, some r by n matrix. Okay, and then with entries from f2 power m even if i have a parity check matrix with entries from f2 power m i can define a binary code in the following fashion okay i can define c to be the code which contains of vectors from f2n what is f2n now It's the n-dimensional binary vector space. So any v, v will be what? V will be only a binary vector. Okay, such that h times v transpose equals zero. Okay, why does this definition make sense? Why can I multiply a vector from with binary entries on the right? Okay, so see, remember this matrix H has entries from f2 power m. Why is it why is it okay for me to multiply with v transpose on the right? Yeah, so f2 power m has f2 in it. Okay, so I can think of the zeros and ones in v as belonging to f2 power m also. Nothing stops me from doing that. And all these multiplications, when I do hv transpose, I will do over f2 power m. Okay, right? Is this clear? So this multiplication is a little bit. You have to think about it a little bit. See, remember each entry in h is from f2 power m. So you have to multiply that. So when you do this multiplication, for instance, if you look at the first row. Okay, so maybe H has a form like this. Okay, so H11, H12, so on till H1n. Okay, so H21, so on till likewise. Okay, if it has a form like this, what am I saying that multiplication is? If I do V1, V2, Vn, all these guys are bits, right? Okay, how do I think of this multiplication? What's the first first entry here? Okay, it will be H11, V1 plus H12, V2 plus so on till h1 n v n okay so that will be the first row okay it will be actually where will it belong it will be in f2 power m right each of these h's h h11 h2 h12 so on they are from f2 power m the v1 v2 are all binary okay so it's either 0 or 1 right wherever there is 1 you will be adding the corresponding hijs okay and that addition will happen only in f2 power m so this will in general belong to f2 power m okay so i'm going to say i will only take those vectors here in my code which will give me zeros here okay all of this should be zero if this belongs to c then this should be the zero vector okay that perfectly makes sense there's nothing that violates this so i can very well choose what I can choose my parity check matrix to have entries from f2 power m okay okay is that clear okay can I choose entries from f3 power m does that make sense okay, you won't get a binary code right because 
0 and 1, the binary 0 and 1 are not in f3 power m. Okay, it has 0 and 1, but what are those two? Dot, what are those 0 and n? 0 and 1. 0 and 1 in f3. Okay, that's the difference 0 and 1 from the 0 and 1 you have in f2. Okay, so you can do f2 power m. You're very safe. Okay, all right. Is that clear? Okay. So this seems to be very clear to you. Okay, the next statement I'm going to make will require some thinking. Okay. Now suppose I say this matrix H has full rank. Okay, remember all this f2 power m is also a field so you can do gaussian elimination in with h nothing stops you from doing that it's a field it's f, f this is a proper matrix with entries from a field so you can do gaussian elimination in fact you can figure out rank also right that's fine suppose i say this h matrix has full rank okay okay what can i say about the dimension of the code can i say anything okay so you see the problem lies there okay how do you find dimension of a code if you define the parity check matrix over f2 power m had this matrix been over f2 based on its rank i can immediately conclude what the dimension of the code will be i can immediately figure out encoding and decoding everything but because i put these entries from f2 power m based on its rank i can't say anything about the dimension of c okay it's because this is not a binary matrix anymore okay so so that's something to be worried about Okay, so immediately, just because it has full rank, I can't say the code has dimension n minus r. I can't say that. Okay, right? Why? Because I'm forcing this vector v to be in f2, not in f2 power m. If I said this v can be in f2 power m, right? You understand what I mean, right? If I say these entries vi are in 0, 1. If I do not place this restriction, yeah, all my linear algebra will apply. But once I place this restriction, the linear algebra in the known form does not apply you cannot use it directly okay so you'll have to worry about dimension okay dimension is a problem we'll come back to it okay we'll come back to it. there's an elegant theory which fixes this problem which tells you how to find dimension for this but but for now dimension is a problem but we won't worry about dimension but other than that other than finding out things like dimension this works perfectly all right okay so let me give you an example of of a simple situation where I'll define a code with parity check matrix having entries over an extension field and we'll try to figure out code words. We'll try to see if we can find the binary code words for, this, for such a code. We'll try to find that. Okay, and then we'll actually see the BCH construction which gives you good minimum distance. Okay, let's see an example. Okay, let me choose F8. Okay, or maybe F4. Okay, so F4 is the easiest thing I can do. Okay, 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, alpha power 3 is 1 and then I will say alpha square is alpha plus 1. Okay, so that is the way of defining F4, right? Is that clear? Okay, so now I might want to define a parity check matrix. Okay, I will just, this is just an example, I will just come up with something just like that without worrying too much about whether anything is reasonable or not. I will say 1 alpha alpha squared okay so let's say that and then we'll say what shall we say okay so we'll say alpha 1 0 okay just like that some uh, arbitrary thing okay okay is that clear so so that's my uh, parity check matrix okay if you have to come up with code words for this parity check matrix okay so what are my code words now remember i have to find length 3 binary vectors okay binary vectors which will multiply this matrix on the right and give me zero okay so try to see if you can quickly find some binary vectors which will follow one vector which will always be there is what 0 0 0 okay so i know 0 0 0 will belong to the code C. Okay, what is my code C? Code is set of all V in F23 such that H times V transpose is 0. Can we find anything else?
No? You're convinced there's no code word? Okay, what's the best way of doing it? Just try all the code words. There are only 8 possibilities, right? 8 vectors. Try all of them. See how many of them are in here. No code word? 1, 1, 1. Okay, some people are saying 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, okay. The first row is okay. It will give you 0. What about the second row? It will give you alpha squared. Okay. Is everybody agreeing that there are no code words, no binary code words for this? Okay, but if you allow your code words to have arbitrary coefficients, yeah, you can easily find. Okay, this has got, if you do Gaussian elimination, you'll see this has got rank 2. Okay, so you can find definitely how many code words. Okay, you can find four, four code words, including the 0. Okay, it's easy to find, but none of them are binary. Okay, so you see in this case, C just happens to be the trivial all 0. Okay, so that was a quite a bad example. Okay, let me give you another example. Same F4. Okay, so in this case you'll see you'll have two different code words 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so doesn't seem very easy, right? I mean, it's not very easy to quickly figure out. The only thing you're doing is trying out all the possibilities. Okay, suddenly if I move from F4 to F256 and give you a long thing, it's, it's going to be tough. It's not, doesn't seem very easy, okay? But there is a way around. Well, not for all codes, but for at least for BCH codes, there's a way around this. Okay, so we'll have to come back and look at that very closely. Okay, so one thing I want to highlight is it's not as easy as the binary codes. If you were to pick each coefficient, each entry in this matrix to be binary, then it's very simple. Just find the rank, and you know, 2 power n minus the row rank of H will give you the exact number of code words, and you know, even an encoder, etc., etc. Okay, so the trick that you have to use to go from so, so it turns out you can take any parity check matrix that's like this, which is non-binary and convert it into an equivalent binary parity check matrix. It's possible. Okay. So that is, uh, it's quite important. Okay. So I'm a little bit confused about this thing not having any, let me just take a quick look at this, make sure I'm happy with this. Oh, okay. okay, so that's fine. So there is a trick that one can use, right, to go from uh, a non-binary parity check matrix. Well, not all. I mean, by, by a parity check matrix over F2 power M to a parity check matrix over F2. Once you do that trick, then you can use all your linear algebra and simply do elimination. Okay, that trick basically involves what he suggested. You have to replace each element with its vector form or oh, that's all you need for instance let me do let me do it in the general case and then we'll come back to these examples and do it once again so it's not too difficult it's a very simple idea look at what's happening in the general case okay so your parity check matrix looks something like this h12 h1 h11 h12 so on till h1n then h21 h22 so on till h2n okay and then i guess the last row would be hr1 hr2 hrn okay so how do you go from a parity check matrix like this with each of these guys from F2 power M to a parity check matrix which has only binary entries? Remember the check should be valid. Okay, You cannot just suddenly say my parity checks will be something else now. Okay? The same parity check should be should be maintained. Okay, So, so what's happening? Let's look at the first row. Okay, What's, what's the check info enforced by the first row? First row tells you h11 times v1 plus h12 times v2 plus so on till h1n times vn equals 0. Okay, So this is one check in, this is one equation in f2 power m. Okay, So this is an equation with 
okay this is one equation in in f2 power m so you remember suppose if you if you have a equation with complex numbers on both sides what would you do how will you get how will you make it into real equations you equate the real parts and equate the imaginary parts you do the same thing here okay so each of these entries is actually a vector in what look at this each of these guys is actually a vector in f2 you have a vector notation so simply replace each of them by their vector notation you will equivalently get m equations in f2 okay and both of them you can go back and forth if all those m equations are satisfied you can replace each of those vectors with this entry in f2 power m and you can go back to an equation in f2 power m and if this equation over f2 power m is satisfied you know that each of those individual equations have to be satisfied right how are you doing addition in f2 power m you take each vector and you add element wise so if the sum of two vectors became zero then each element wise sum should also become zero okay so it's very natural that one equation gives you m equations in f2 okay so what do you do is you replace h i j by vector by uh, uh by its vector notation okay sorry about this vector notation okay to get m equations over f2 okay so that's the simple trick you use okay so if you do that your r by n parity check matrix with entries from f2 power m becomes what matrix m times r cross n okay n remains the same m n doesn't get multiplied by m okay right each entry is being replaced by a column vector okay imagine a column vector okay so you should remember it's a column vector think of it as a m cross 1 column vector okay so each entry is getting replaced by a column vector so the number of rows will become m times r but the number of columns will remain the same okay so that's what happens right each equation becomes m equations with binary coefficient so if you have r equations in f2 power m you'll get m times r equations with the same number of variables okay so now you see your rank argument has to be done with the binary version and not the version over f2 power m okay so that's the important thing once you come to binary you can use all your gauss in elimination and rank arguments to count the number of code words and everything will work out exactly as before okay so now if you use this in our examples you will see in one case you will get a different I mean, to, in two, both those cases you will get two different uh, results as, as a result of gauss in elimination okay so let's go back to the first example what was it in our first example we had 1 alpha alpha squared and then alpha 1 0 right so this is the equation over f4 okay in binary so if you convert to binary if you go to binary then what should you do you will get a 4 by 3 matrix right each entry is going to be replaced by its column vector notation okay so it's good to write down the vector and vector notation 0 1 alpha alpha squared so if you say your basis is alpha 1 okay so this is going to be 0 0 this is going to be 0 1 this is going to be 1 0 and this is going to be 1 okay so once you write it down in vector notation okay so you can replace everything very easily 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 you would get 1 0 0 1 0 0 So this is a 4 by 3 matrix. If you actually simplify this, you'll see it la it has rank 3. Okay, so obviously then your your code becomes only the all zero. Okay, you have a rank full rank matrix, right? Multiplying, you, you the null space will be only the zero. Okay, nothing more will be there. Okay, so that is something you can use. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so the second example tells you that you have to be very careful when you do the rank. You have to actually compute the rank just based on the number of equations you can't conclude anything right that's the second example what was my second example you had 1 alpha alpha squared alpha 1 no i think alpha alpha squared 1 okay 
So even here, it looks like you'll end up with a 4 by 3 binary matrix, but actually its rank happens to be 2. Okay, so that's why it works out in this fashion. Okay, so let me rewrite this a little bit clearly. Okay, so if, if you go to binary, okay, so again do the same 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1011101 1, 1. okay so you see these two are linear combination of the first two okay you add the first two rows you'll get this the second row is a repetition of the first row itself okay so these two are not are linearly dependent on first two rows Okay, so you in fact get only a 2 by 3 binary matrix with linearly independent rows and that gives you a, that gives you two code words, right? It will get two code words, 2 power 1, 2 code words and that makes sense. Okay, so I could have also figured out that the last two, in fact this row itself is linearly dependent on the first row, right? If you take a look, okay, right? In binary you may not be able to see but what happens here if you multiply by alpha you get this so there was a so so linear dependence in higher fields might be a little bit more subtle in fact there can be more more confusing cases than this in the case i wrote down it was it was very simple yeah the, even that can happen okay we'll see an example soon enough okay so i want to show you more examples where something more funky can happen okay all right Okay, so let's see another example. I think to go to really interesting examples. Okay, so maybe 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 here even here we can see this example. Huh? Let me see. Yeah, maybe maybe you can try this example even over F4, it might work. Yeah, this will, this will work. This will eminently work. Okay, try this. Figure out binary codes. Okay, so even using your exhaustive search method, you can quickly find that the code words are 000 and 111. Okay, so you see 111 is also a code word. Okay, and then and then you you go to binary and do your uh, you look at it very carefully. So you'll get zero one 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 zero. So you see once again these two are linearly dependent okay okay but the original two rows are actually linearly independent over f4 they're not linearly dependent okay when you expanded it out they became linearly dependent okay so it's a nice little, little bit of a trickery going on here okay something very subtle is happening okay it's not it's not very difficult once i once i give you the result it will seem very simply but still it's something something more involved can happen okay i want you to attempt a gaussian elimination on this and get me the row reduced form over F4. I think it's an interesting exercise. Should be comfortable doing that. Just to confirm that it is full rank. Okay, what is the RREF of H? Row reduced echelon form in, in F4. What is this? Okay, you have to do operations over the field, right? It's a little bit confusing when you have to do elimination over the field. Okay, what is it? One zero. Okay, well, the row reduced echelon form should be I and something. You should have to do also something else. I want one zero zero one here. Tell me what I need. One zero one. Zero one. One. Okay. It's not surprising that you get something like this. 
okay so so clearly it has full rank in f4 okay there's no no problem its rank is 2 in f4 okay but when you replace with binary suddenly those the second row actually became linearly dependent okay so one needs to do you have a question okay one needs to one needs to be a little bit more careful okay the reason why this has happened the reason why this has happened is if you do okay why did this happen okay okay there's a very curious result about binary fields okay what is x plus y whole squared okay okay you typically write it as well this is always true x squared plus y squared plus 2xy okay if x and y come from an arbitrary field x plus y whole squared is x squared plus y squared plus 2xy there's no problem if i say the characteristic of my field is 2 what happens 2 becomes 0 okay so when characteristic is 2 you get x squared plus y squared is equal to x plus y whole square okay so this is a bit little bit of a subtlety okay now you can also extend this if you have x plus y plus z whole square what will you get x square plus y square plus z square okay so so squaring becomes like that in fact if you have characteristic p where p is for some prime one can show x power p plus y power p will be x plus y whole power p okay the proof is a little bit more subtle you'll have to use some binomial expansion type thing and use the fact that p is prime you'll get this answer okay x plus y to the power p will be x power p plus y power p okay so why is this why how did this show up here you'll, if you notice the second row in this h okay what is what is the relationship between the second row and this h and the first row if you square the first row what do you get if you square each element of the first row you will get the second row okay so so there is some connection so why does it mean that the binary thing will have rank less okay i'll show you what happens okay so what is the equation for the first row v1 times 1 plus v2 times alpha plus v3 times alpha squared equals 0 this was the first the first equation okay equation from first row what i can do is i can square this equation if i square it what would happen okay so if you square what happens okay squaring will give you v1 plus v1 times 1 plus v2 times alpha plus v3 times alpha squared whole square equals 0 okay this is another equation but now what do i know about characteristic two fields I can simply square each term. So I get v1 squared times 1 squared which is again 1, v2 squared times alpha squared plus v3 times what? Alpha, alpha to the power 4 which is alpha equals 0. So now these two equations are dependent, right? How did I get this? I squared it and got it. So it cannot be independent. Okay. Now what about this v1 squared, v2 squared, v3 squared? Okay. Now v1, v2, v3 are binary. Okay. That's very important. If you don't know that v1, v2, v3 are binary, you can't do this simplification. But if you know v1, v2, v3 are binary, okay, if you have a if you have 0 or 1, if you square it, what do you get? You will get the same thing. In binary, x square equals x. Okay, so v1 square equals v1. Okay, remember vi belong to 0, 1. Okay, that implies vi squared is vi. Okay, so this equation will reduce to v1 times 1 plus v2 times alpha squared plus v3 times alpha equals 0. Okay, so because these vi's were binary, the second equation became linearly dependent on the first equation. So that's why when you replace it with the binary equivalent, the last two equations become dependent. And when you don't, in f4, they are linearly independent. Okay, so the squaring can actually give you linear dependence in f2. Okay, so it's a little bit of a subtlety in characteristic two fields which you should be squaring usually is non-linear right I mean you don't think of squaring as giving you some linear dependence okay but squaring can be linearly dependent in in if you if all your coefficients are binary okay? it's a little bit subtle to think about okay so this is one point which you have to keep in mind when you go from paratychic matrix over f2 power m to 
parity check matrix over F2. Rank doesn't mean anything. Okay, so there are some more intricacies to how these things work out. Okay, so I think that that's uh, I mean I can do more complicated examples from F8 and F16, but it will only mean more careful linear algebra. Okay, but that is good practice. Okay, if you go to my website, there's a link. I think I don't know if you've seen uh, if you've ever gone to my website. If you go to my website, there's a link to this course. Okay, there's also a link to video lectures, and this course actually has lots of assignments posted. Okay, so apparently IITM is having some trouble with their courses website. Okay, so it's not getting updated. So you should uh, you should look at the problems in my website for this course, and you'll see there'll be some practice problems on course defined over F8 and F16 and all that. It's very good practice to have. Okay, particularly for your exams. It's very good practice. Okay, so so let me go ahead now and start defining BCH codes. Okay. So <clears throat> so I'll define it for a particular case, and there can be more general definitions. Okay, I'll define it only for a particular case. Okay, so maybe later on we'll see a generalization. Okay. So I will pick n to be 2 power m minus 1. Okay, so my block length is going to be 2 power m minus 1. Then I will pick, like like before, I think I wrote this down. Alpha belonging to 2 power m will be primitive. Okay, so I'll take these two things and then I'll write down a parity check matrix. Okay, and claim that it will give you minimum distance d. Okay. Okay, so far I've not talked much about minimum distance, but but minimum distance d will come about from that matrix is what I'm going to claim. Okay, so what is the parity check matrix? The parity check matrix will look something like this. Okay, so d is my target minimum distance. Okay, so parity check matrix will look like one alpha alpha squared so on alpha power 3 i'll write down that so on till alpha power n minus 1 okay and the second row is 1 alpha squared alpha squared squared alpha squared raised to the power 3 so on till alpha squared raised to the power n minus 1 okay and so on till i'll go 1 alpha power d minus 1 alpha power d minus 1 raised to the power 2 alpha power d minus 1 raised to the power 3 so on till alpha power d minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 okay that is the parity check matrix which will give you minimum distance uh, well actually it will give you minimum distance greater than or equal to d okay so let me write that down it's very important. Okay, so how do you show that? Is one very important thing. How did I get that? Is important. I'll come to it slowly. Okay, K is something we won't talk about. I don't know. Is it is it showing up clearly? Are you able to read it? What will be the third row? What will be the third row? 1 alpha power 3, alpha power 3 squared, alpha power 3 raised to the power 3, so on till alpha power 3 raised to the power n minus 1. Okay, so you have to go as to, as long as d minus 1. Okay, so if you have d minus 1, you go up to d minus 1, you get minimum distance greater than or equal to d. That's guaranteed. Okay, so that's what I'm going to see. Okay, let's see a few examples of this and then we'll see the proof for why minimum distance will work out. Okay, okay. So the example I'm going to take, I'll take from F16 because it's complicated enough and it's it's long enough so that you'll get some non-trivial nice codes. Alpha squared to alpha power 14. Okay, so alpha power 15 is 1 and I say alpha power 4 is alpha plus 1. Okay, so that's my F16. Okay, and then if suppose I say, okay, D up to D equals... 3, I guess maybe it's not interesting. We know already how to do d equals 3, but just let's just for the heck of it look at d equals 3. Okay, let's just look at d equals 3. What do you do for d equals 3? My BCH code is going to have parity check matrix 
what 1 okay what will be n once I say f16 what is n 15 right I always said n is 2 power m minus 1 okay so one can relax this one can do n less than 2 power m minus 1 okay so you don't have to become equal but I'll say, say equal okay anything lesser will be very clear okay so n equals 15 okay and then I should do what 1 alpha alpha squared alpha power 3 I'll write down till say alpha power 5 okay just for fun it will go on till alpha power 14 right that's the first row what's the second row 1 alpha squared alpha power 4 alpha power 6 alpha power 8 alpha power 10 it will go on till alpha power 28 that is my parity check matrix you might have the urge to simplify this a little bit for instance you might say alpha power 28 is actually what alpha power 13 okay but well, that's up to you if you think you should really only give numbers that are in this list of the field elements then you can do that simplification but it doesn't matter i know what alpha power 28 is i can always evaluate okay so i know what it is so it's not a problem okay so this is my parity check matrix for d equals 3 okay so he asked a question what about k okay, i have not said anything about k okay so if i have to find k how will i go about it Okay, so what's what's the step for finding k? See, this is a parity check matrix with entries from f16. So how will I find k? I have to go to f2, right? So I have to replace each element with its column vector and then look at rank. Okay, but look at the second row. What what is the second row? Second row is the square of the first row, which means when I do all that, what will happen? The second row will become linearly dependent on the first row. So only the m equations from the first row will be linearly independent when I go to binary okay right is that clear when I go to binary okay only first row provides independent equations okay second row why because second row equals first row squared okay so we saw in the previous example and that can be easily generalized okay so I, I wrote it in a very general fashion it can be very easily generalized in general squaring will give you linearly dependent things when you do that okay so now go ahead and look at the first row what does it have one alpha alpha squared all the non-zero elements of f16 okay now if i replace each of them with their vector representation what will i get what will i get all the 15 non zero vectors of length 4 okay what is that code we already know that code what's that code if i take you remember how, how did we do optimum d equals 3 constructions for a given r what did we do we looked at 2 power r minus 1 right all r bit vectors of that are non-zero we knew that is the maximum n for which you will get okay looks like enough people have forgotten this okay so you're going to be in trouble okay so that's the hamming code okay so you see when you when you go to binary you see this becomes the n equals 15 binary hamming code okay so those four rows will be linearly dependent and you can easily conclude this is a 15 11 3 code okay so if you want if you don't believe me you can actually go ahead and replace each of those things look at the vector notation that i had before you'll see you'll get all the vectors and you can rearrange to get the identity if you want you can do encoding you can do decoding you can do anything you want so you see like i claimed you're getting d equals 3 okay there's no problem okay so let's look at d equals 5 you know that's the most non-trivial example for us okay so even number we don't really care given any odd number we can get it's the next even number right you simply extend it's not a big deal so let's look at d equals 5 for d equals 5 what's my bch parity check matrix okay so now we will get something which is genuinely new okay which we have never seen before we have not seen really codes with minimum distance 5 for n equals 15 we never saw okay so if you look at it first row is going to be 1 alpha alpha square i'll stop with alpha power 3 
okay all the way to alpha pop 14 what will be the second row what will be the second row 1 alpha square alpha pop 4 alpha pop 6 so on till alpha pop 28 what will be the third row okay do i need a third row yeah i need d minus 1 no i, I need four rows okay so 1 alpha pop 3 alpha pop 6 alpha pop 9 so on till alpha pop 42 okay then the fourth row is 1 alpha pop 4 alpha pop 8 alpha pop 12 alpha pop 56 okay is that clear okay so so what i want to do at this point is to okay so let's resume so so that's all right i mean it's it's fine i mean we're getting up we're getting we have a parity check matrix with uh, four rows and entries from uh, f16 and uh, okay so that's fine okay so now you might worry about okay n equals 15 is fine and i have not proved it to you but i have always i've already told you this will give me a minimum distance greater than or equal to 5 okay so by cons by i mean we'll we'll see a quick proof it's not very difficult to prove this but but anyway but this this we've already shown but what about k okay you might worry about k first before you before you worry about anything else but worry about k how do i find k now okay so again what the only way we know is what replace each column with each entry with a column vector and see what happens okay so that's the only thing we can say but before we do that we can smartly rule out some cases you can not only rule out the second one you can also rule out the fourth one why it's again repeated square right right so so you see in binary in characteristic 2 x plus y to the power say some 2 power uh, s will be what x power 2 power s plus y power 2 power s right why you can keep on repeatedly squaring okay so you square you get x plus y whole square then you get one more square x plus y to the power 4 one more square you'll get x plus y to the power 8 okay all powers of 2 will be covered okay so you see these two guys will be when you expand to binary they will be linearly dependent okay remember that once again k will be linearly dependent in in the binary version only only if you insist your code words are binary okay the moment you relax that constraint they will in fact be linearly independent we can show that we'll show that later also okay so this will be linearly dependent in binary version okay so that is that makes sense only when you when you say the code words are forced to be binary okay so i only worry about these two in fact those two when you expand out you will see they are linearly independent okay so you will get eight linearly independent binary checks from this parity check matrix okay so other two rows give you independent okay when in binary it can be less than eight yeah less than eight but in this case i know it will be eight okay, if, you, if you want you can replace it that's why i was looking for the table you can make a quick argument for why but i don't have the table with me but you can you can substitute it and you'll check it will be equal to eight okay yeah it, in general it can be less than eight that's true in binary row one and three provide eight linearly independent checks okay so based on that we can conclude k will be 15 minus 8 which will be 7 okay okay so another thing you can conclude once you come to binary is it's very easy to come up with a weight 5 code word so that the minimum weight minimum distance will actually be 5 itself okay so this code is actually a 15 7 5 code okay and that's the first such code we have seen in this class so it's a two error correcting code of length 15 with how many code words 128 code words 2 power 7 code words we've never seen a code like that okay and you see the construction it's it's just so ready-made and simple okay so it's, it's it's elegant it's nice you know it's a very ordered structure with entries from f16 all you have to do is go look up the vector notation replace the columns okay but what's hidden is where did the minimum distance 5 come from okay how did i get minimum distance 5 okay of course i'm doing d minus 1 rows there's a very close connection with that but you'll see yeah greater than or equal to 5 is what we can prove in the way we prove but in this co in this code in the specific code 
Once you convert to binary or even otherwise, it's very easy to find a weight 5 code word. So you know it's equal to 5. Okay, so yeah, so 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 that's the magic. Okay. So now suppose if I say I want n equals 255, okay, and d equals 10. Okay, you should be able to easily construct a parity check matrix, right? You know what to do. When is 255? I'll pick F256. I know a construction for it. I, I have a table for it. Then if I want d equals 10, what will I do? I'll go from 1 alpha alpha square all the way down to 1 alpha power 9, so on. Okay, d equals 10 maybe is useless. Maybe d equals 11. I'll, I'll go all the way down to alpha power 10. Then I have a 5 error correcting code. The only non-trivial thing is then figuring out what k is. Okay, and then encoding, etc., etc. Those, those are those are things we can deal with. But at least I know how to design a parity check matrix. And going to these extension fields, f2 power m is one of the most elegant ways of doing it. Of course, there are other ways, classical ways of just looking at binary matrices itself. But this is a very beautiful and elegant method, which gives you nice construction for any minimum distance you want. Okay. If you increase n. Okay. For a fixed D or fixed D by N? Fixed D by N in this construction K by N will not approach 1. Oh, not approach 1 or it will not approach even a non-zero number. It will go off to 0. Okay. So, so anyway, so this is at least one construction that we have which is very easy to understand. Any of us can reproduce at any time. You know, you know how to come up with a paradigmatic matrix for any minimum distance. Okay. So the next thing I want to prove to you is that this construction actually gives you minimum distance as guaranteed. Okay. So I'll sketch the proof. It's very easy. It uses a notion of what's called Vandermonde matrix. Okay. So I'll, I'll just write it down whenever it comes. And as I said, that matrix plays a crucial role in guaranteeing minimum distance. Okay. So it's a simple matrix. And it's a very elegant idea. Okay. So here's proof for. minimum distance okay so the result for this proof is also called the bch bound okay 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 so let's see let's see uh, let's say we have uh, matrix h Okay, which goes from 1 alpha alpha squared all the way to alpha power n minus 1. Okay, 1 alpha square alpha power 4 all the way to alpha 2 to the power n, 2 times n minus 1 all the way down to 1 alpha power d minus 1 alpha power d minus 1 squared all the way down to alpha power d minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1. This is my parity check matrix. I want to claim the minimum distance of the code defined by this parity check matrix is greater than or equal to d. Okay. So now go back to the connection between parity check matrix and minimum distance. What should I show now? If there are no d minus 1 or fewer columns of this parity check matrix which will add to 0. Okay, That is what I have to show. right? Which will add to 0 because my code words are binary right right go back think about that connection what is the connection between parity check matrix and i'm sorry no 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 the singleton bound won't work here what why, why are you saying singleton bound singleton bound says d is less than or equal to something in any case it won't work you can't say d is greater than or equal to something i want i want a greater than or equal to proof Okay, singleton bound is for all those bounds are always less than or equal to. It's never greater than or equal. The Gilbert Warshama bound is what says that D is achievable. Okay, that's the only thing. Okay. So here I want to show no vector of weight less than or equal to D minus 1, right? Can multiply this matrix on the right and give me 0. That's what I want to show. No binary vector of weight less than or equal to D minus 1. Okay. Can multiply. Into that. That's what I want to show. Okay, so the way I'll show it is, I'll assume a vector of weight w, which is less than or equal to d minus one, actually multiplies and gets me zero, and then I'll come to a contradiction. Okay, that's what I'll do. Okay, so that's the that's the way we'll do it. Suppose we 
you have some w less than or equal to d minus 1 and some vector v which is say let's say v1 to vn with weight of v equal to w such that h times v transpose equals 0. Okay, so I am going to move towards, assume that the contrary is true and then move towards a contradiction. Okay, eventually I will get a contradiction and from there I will say this is not possible. Okay, so that is the thing. Okay, so once I say weight of v is w, what does it mean? There are only w positions here which are 1s, everything else is 0. Okay, so I will say 1s in v are at positions, so let 1s in v be at positions say i1, i2 so on till iw ok ok what does this mean ok so the columns i1, i2 and i2, iw add to 0 ok so when I multiply with v on the right ok so all the other columns will drop out of this Right, all the other columns do not enter this. Only these columns I1 through IW are going to add to 0. Okay, so let me write that down by itself. Okay, so what is the I1 column? Okay, go back and look at this this thing. What is the ith column? Okay, if I have to write the ith column, what will it be? It will be alpha power i here, it will be alpha power 2i so on till alpha power d minus 1 times i ok that is the ith column ok. So, what will be the i1th column alpha power i1 alpha power 2i1 so on till alpha power d minus 1 i1. What will be the i2th column alpha power i2 alpha power 2i2 so on till alpha power d minus 1 i2 so on till alpha power i w alpha power 2 i w ok all the way down to alpha power d minus 1 i w I am sorry yeah it is fine no i 1 equals 0 is fine I am happy with anything it is not a problem one of these things can be 0 do I have oh there is a problem with v 0 is it did I do something like that did I do v1 to vn? Is that a problem? Yeah, so maybe I should do v0 to vn minus 1. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so you're pointing that out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I should put v0 to vn minus 1 so that I get this alpha power to match. Okay, so that's, that's not a problem. Okay, so one of i1 can be 0 if you want. Okay, so I know what, what's going to multiply here. I'm going to get this multiplying all ones to give me. 0 all 0 ok ok so now I know w is less than or equal to d minus 1 ok and this matrix is actually a long matrix ok so what I will do is I will only take the square sub matrix ok it is enough I know I mean longer than that I am I am guaranteed that I will definitely have linearly dependent relationships so I do not want to throw I want to throw all that out I will take only the first w rows so that I get a nice square matrix and simplify that. Okay, I know w is less than or equal to 2 minus 1. So I just take the square part and how does it look? Let's let's write that down once again. Okay, alpha power i1, alpha power 2 i1, so on till alpha to the power w i1, alpha power i2, alpha power 2 i2, so on till alpha power w i2, alpha power i w, alpha power 2 i w, alpha power w i w. Okay, this times now I have a nice square matrix 1 equals 0 ok so 0 of suitable suitable length is that clear ok ok so remember none of the two i's are the same ok i1 is not equal to i2 okay? it cannot be equal right that is clear ok so they are distinct positions and all of them are ones I have said ok I have w ones so none of them are equal ok that is clear and this is a square matrix this is a w by w square matrix and it has a non-zero vector in its null space right 
clearly has a non zero vector in its null space which means what it cannot be full rank or its determinant has to be has to be zero okay its determinant has to be zero okay so now we'll write down the determinant for this and you'll see this is actually what's called a vandermon matrix for which the determinant is a very simple expression and the determinant cannot be zero whenever i1 i2 and iw are all distinct so you will get a contradiction which means the minimum weight cannot be less than or equal to d minus 1 okay so we will show essentially determinant of this matrix is non zero once you show, show show determinant of this matrix is non zero you cannot have a non zero vector in its null space which means you get a contradiction so that's the contradiction that we'll be getting towards okay so for that all you need to do is this is the vandermon matrix okay I will identify this as the Vandermonde matrix. Okay, so the way the Vandermonde matrix is written down is as, as follows. Okay, so this matrix plays a central role. You write it down as A1, A2, A, let's say M, no, it's, I don't know, some S. Okay, the S by S Vandermonde matrix is written like this A1 squared, A2 squared. A S squared. You might have come across this in some uh, in some in some version or the other. Okay, so it's a very popular popular example even in school. Okay, to get you to calculate determinants. Okay, so you can use some nice uh, identities you know about the determinants, replacing columns with other columns, etc., and quickly show that the determinant of this will be product of A I minus A J. Okay. Of course, some i less than j or some such thing. Okay, so basically, it will only involve terms such as a i minus a j. There could also be some minus one pass something here. Okay, so I might be missing some non-zero factors here, but it only has a i minus a j. Okay, what is the only way that this determinant can be zero? If some a i equals some a j. Okay, so you just go back and look at this other matrix closely that we had. It is exactly a W by W Vandermonde matrix with distinct a i's, which means its determinant. Cannot be zero. Okay, so that's a very simple uh, idea. Okay, so this is exactly a Vandermonde matrix, which means and and the see the i1, i2 to iw are all distinct, which means the a1s are will never repeat. The a and aj will not be the same. And determinant is not equal to zero, so you get a contradiction. Okay, I know I didn't write down all those things very clearly. I'll try to fill it up in your own words. Okay, you know where we are heading. Okay, so that's the elegance and underlying beauty of this construction. Okay, so if you go and look at it carefully, how this Vandermonde matrix comes about, there'll be a nice interchange between the way the powers are done. Okay, so it's very nice, very simple construction based on very elementary linear algebra, and you get minimum distance guaranteed just based on uh, matrix. Okay, clearly again, this only shows that minimum distance is greater than or equal to d, right? Right, less than or equal to d minus one is not possible, is what we have shown. So minimum distance is greater than or equal to d. How will I show minimum distance is equal to d? I have to produce a weight d code word. Okay, that's that's one way of showing it, right? In fact, one can argue that's the only way of showing it. Okay, you have to produce a weight d code word. Once you produce a weight d code word, its minimum distance is equal to d. In case you cannot produce, maybe it is actually actually strictly greater than d okay it can be greater but people have studied this for a long time and conclusion is mostly the bch bound is very very tight okay? in various cases of interest in almost all cases of interest minimum distance is always equal to d for the bch code and there are some places where it's violated also where it's where it's a little bit away but it's always close okay? it's not too far away okay the bch bound is a good bound okay is that clear? Okay. So, okay. So once again, I want to, I want to reiterate this point. I want to go through this once again. Given any minimum distance d, okay. So I'm, I'm only interested in some code of minimum distance d, okay. Some d. How do you go about constructing it? You can do it for some n, which is 2 power m minus 1, okay. So I also said n can be less than 2 power m minus 1, right? You see why that is okay. Okay. So you go back and look at this proof. I never really used the fact that n is equal to 2 power m minus 1. Okay, it should be less than that, that's all. Okay, I'll always get my Vandermonde thing to work. Okay. 
so it's fine but we'll just stick to n equals 2 power m minus 1 it doesn't hurt us so for n equals 2 power m minus 1 okay i've seen i can achieve a minimum distance d okay with by choosing entries in my for my parity check matrix from f2 power m okay and what does that matrix look like okay i know i've done this before so i'll just simply go cut and paste okay so Okay. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay? So, I would simply pick my parity check matrix to be of this form. Okay? And any d I want, I can now deal with it. Okay? Okay, so only thing that is missing, okay? So, again, it's not it's not difficult to imagine any m and any d as long as you have that finite field in your hand as long as you have a vector vector to power conversion you can always fill in the non zero the, the vector equivalent and get a binary parity check matrix okay but the numbers can be truly daunting for instance suppose i say n is even let's say just just for fun let's say 1023 okay so it's a rather large number okay i'm, I'm picking m equals 10 right okay and suppose I say I want d equals d greater than or equal to some 17. Okay, so it's, it's a large, large number. So you have to deal with what? Some alpha belonging to f1024, which is primitive. Okay, and how large will your h be? 16 times 1024. And if you were to replace everything with binary equivalent, you're going to get what? Each element is how many bits? 10 bits now. So, you will get 160 by 1023. Okay. And if you have to do Gaussian elimination and do encoding or even try and do decoding minimum distance, you're not going, it's not going to work. Okay. So, it's going to be way too many uh, I mean, message bits to worry about, way too many, such a large matrix, you have to worry about too many syndromes. It will not work very easily. Okay. So, you see for large numbers, implementation is still going to be a big problem okay implementation can st can still be a problem <coughs> okay so if you go the traditional route what is the traditional route you replace each of these entries with binary equivalence find its equivalent binary parity check matrix and do your encoding and decoding with that you are not you are going to be really limited by complexity you cannot really imagine anything larger than 63 or 127 you can't go to 1024 and all that okay so you need some better way of dealing with that is there any further structure to this then that's what's apparent okay so the first thing i want to address before i go to the uh, special structure of this which will give us more handle on what this code actually is i want to first look at k okay so before we even worry about implementation you have to find k right What's the only way we have of finding k? The same route. You have to again replace, again do linear, linear elimination, all that. Again, finding k also is quite non-trivial. It's not very simple. Okay, so even for finding k, it can be daunting. Oh my goodness. K by n tends to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's for large n, it's not a good code. For small n, it's okay. Moderate n, it's okay. Okay, so let, let's look at some numbers, okay? So finding k also appears to be a problem. Okay? So both these issues have to be solved in a very nice way and they can be solved. Okay, using, using very simple, nice ideas from what are called ideals and all these things one can solve this very very beautifully and you will finally see 
every code word of a bch code has a very very simple description in fact you can design a linear feedback shift register okay you know what a linear feedback shift register is right it's a bunch of d flip flops with some connections okay to encode bch codes okay so it's as simple as that okay a very simple linear feedback shift register with bits being shifted in will encode bch codes okay it's very different from the way i was talking about okay m times g okay you don't have to store such huge matrices all you need is an lfsr okay such simplification is possible for bch codes okay all that comes from looking at these code words with a slightly different viewpoint from a slightly different viewpoint if you see you'll see there are wonderful properties that come out for this code and you get some uh, very nice results okay so before that i want to first address this problem of k okay and try to see if i can get a nice simple bound for k okay which will work for now okay just to look at look at some numbers and then we'll actually look into this theory okay one thing that we knew is what square is going to be linearly dependent okay so any even number from 1 to d minus 1 okay i have d minus 1 rows every even numbered row is going to be linearly dependent on some odd numbered row so even though i have d minus 1 rows half of them are going to be clearly linearly dependent there's no problem okay so that's the first argument okay so since squaring works okay suppose i have n equals 2 power m minus 1 and suppose i want d to be let's say i'll say d equals 2t plus 1 okay so my h has what d minus 1 by n rows which is 2t by n matrix right okay but out of this 2t only t are linearly independent okay all even numbered rows are linearly dependent okay on that row by 2 okay if you take the 10th row it will be the square of the 5th row okay so it's enough if you only keep the odd numbered rows okay so only the odd numbered rows will be can can one can expect to be linearly independent and in most cases they will all end up being linearly independent also okay so you clearly see h in binary will have less than or equal to m times t linearly independent rows right not two times m times t only m times t linearly independent rows so from there you can conclude k is actually greater than or equal to n minus mt okay so it's a very simple result you can have without looking at looking at any further uh, any deeper understanding of what these codes actually are a simple result just based on the squaring and this bound also happens to be very tight for small t particularly okay so it's very tight for small t what do i mean by a bound being tight yeah it's very close the actual value is very close to this bound okay and for many cases for small t it's exact okay it's not just tight it's exact for small t okay. so if you take t equals 1 or t equals 2 or t equals 3 4 5 even till some 10 okay if you want only want to only correct 10 errors or something this bound is always exact okay more or less in most cases okay so so you see i mean even without knowing anything about the code i can list out the parameters of possible bch codes okay suppose for instance i want to list out with m equals 8 bch code parameters okay so if i say t equals 1 what will i get okay 255 okay k is what greater than or equal to 255 minus 8 which is 247 right and then d is greater than or equal to 2t plus 1 which is 3 okay i know i can construct i know how to construct the parity check matrix for a 255 247 3 code okay in fact this will also be the binary hamming code okay okay without i mean one can prove this for any m okay for any m for t equals 1 you'll always get the binary hamming code as a bch code okay 
but if i want t equals 2 okay why am i concentrating on t that is the error correcting capability right i'm, I'm able to correct two errors okay what will be the parameters 255 255 minus 16 which is 239 and then 5 code okay then let's say t equals 3 255 231 7 code i know all these parameters are exact okay i know there is only a bound right i can only say greater than or equal to here and then greater than or equal to here but i know people have shown that all these things are exact okay so let's say t equals 4 okay. 255 223 9 okay likewise you can keep on listing okay so let's list for some number okay let's say for t equals 16 Okay, what would you get? 255. What is 16 times 8? 127. Code. Okay. So imagine the power of that statement. Okay, if you're if you're not if you're not imagining the power of that statement, I would ask you to step back and think about it. Okay, what am I saying when I say I have a 255, 127, 33 code? i can produce 2 power 127 vectors binary vectors of length 255 any two of them will differ in at least 33 places okay so it's it's a remarkable achievement from where we started okay so if you imagine if i, if I told you at the beginning of this class that you would do something like that how many of you would have believed me i don't know if you would have believed me but it would have been very surprising if you had the tools to do something like that you can produce 2 power 127 if you imagine how large that number is it's a huge number okay right 2 power 10 is 10 power 3 okay so 2 power 127 is a huge number okay that many vectors of length 255 okay binary vectors you can produce and you're guaranteed that any two of them will always differ in at least 33 places okay so it's a remarkable achievement okay and you see the construction the way it works it just relies on very simple techniques without Without anything that is very extraordinarily great. Or I mean, when they came up with it, I'm sure it was an extraordinarily great achievement. But now, when you look at it in a structured way, it seems like a very simple result of very few things put together. Okay, but I want you to go back and look at the Vandermort construction once again and convince yourself. I'm not quite sure. I think it is exact, but I'm not quite sure. But yeah, I think it is exact. I think for all BCH codes, for 255, satisfy the bound. I think. Uh, uh, meet the bound. I think. I mean, I might want to check that. But there are papers which you can look up that will give you all these things but that's the power of this, uh, this this elegance and simplicity in this bch code construction okay so take your time and look at that van der waals matrix and how that structure beautifully comes about okay the way you do the alpha par d and the way the powers will interchange and give you a van der waals matrix is really really nice okay so it's very very wonderful it gives you such powerful things okay so on the flip side unfortunately these codes are never implemented okay? <laughs> so so people implement reed solomon codes they don't really implement bch codes that way some people do and today's reality is all these codes have been upstaged by codes such as ldpc codes and turbo codes which are completely inelegant in their construction okay totally inelegant and random and you know arbitrary is the word that comes to mind you know i mean it's just an but that's they are also powerful in their own way okay if all you are interested in is coding gain and all that they give you really good coding gain way better coding gain than what bch codes can good can be and like he has been saying they are also good these ldpc codes are also good on average okay so these codes are not that good uh, they become for large n they don't they're not as good the ratios you get are not that good okay so that's the problem and <coughs> it's quite unfortunate but anyway as far as we are concerned we will see this reasonably okay so we'll see a little bit more of this see that structure which makes it uh, which which gives you a very simple lfsr implementation for the encoder we'll see that and then we'll move on to read solomon codes very quick okay so i believe your first quiz is on feb I'm sorry 20th okay so i'm i'm quite sure i'll be done with read solomon codes by that time okay so if you're not keeping up if you're not if you're not going to my website if you've not downloaded those problems if you have not tried to work it out on your own if you're not if you're not if you're not doing all that you'll be in big trouble in your first quiz okay so before the quiz i'll have a few tutorial sessions where we work out problems together okay so we will do that in the last week but i want you to do this regularly okay it's an elective course 
I'm I'm assuming that all of you are interested enough that you'll go and do these problems on your own. Okay, I'm not forcing you to do it, but if you don't do it and show up for the exam, you will fail. Okay, so I fail people in this class. It's, it's quite miserable for me to say that, but particularly people who are not regular. Okay, people who just come and sample lectures and then hope that the exam will be a repetition of the problem sheet. They have failed in this class. Okay, so don't fail. Okay, <laughs> don't don't uh, don't do that to yourself. Okay, so. Okay, so that's the only, we'll stop here for today. We'll meet again tomorrow and pick up from here, and I'll show you some wonderful properties of this BCH code, which makes which simplifies the encoding and understanding of this.